Hey guys, welcome to another car vlog. Um, today I'm coming at y'all at a completely brand new angle. <laughs> um, I really recently got myself a GoPro, and um, I'm giving it a shot in my truck today. Hopefully, the camera angle holds up. Now, the next question on your mind might be, why am I wearing a jacket with it zipped completely open? Um, and that is a simple reason. I noticed that my views and my watch time tend to be on the higher side of the spectrum when I'm showing off my cleavage. <laughs> so, welcome to the car vlog. Um, today's topic of discussion, I'm actually I'm actually uh, going across the bridge, of the, heading off the island to run an errand, but I figured this would be a perfect time for me to... Um, for me to do a car vlog guys by the way i always if you ever pass by someone that's like peeking into your car window as they drive by that's me i literally do that to every single car i pass <laughs> um but yeah today's topic is um protein intake and more specifically um my personal tips and i suppose opinions on ways to make protein intake easier because sometimes some of us have a hard time eating the adequate amount that we uh you know the adequate amount of protein that our bodies need and with that said uh if i'm not mistaken the supposed scientific literature <laughs> uh says something like uh your body needs like what point point seven to uh 1.5 grams of protein per uh pound of body weight so if, we, if you weigh 150 pounds that comes out to la, 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 what like roughly 100 grams of protein all the way up to the high end of even 225 grams of protein if my math is right <laughs> um and you know for someone that weighs 150 pounds i would imagine that eating 225 grams of protein would be quite difficult right now hitting the more reasonable you know 150 to 170 grams is doable right because me is me weighing between 210 to 215 i would like me personally i've noticed i feel the best when i eat about 180 to 200 210 grams of protein 210 to 220 grams of protein is really pushing it for me it makes me feel sort of bloated and um uh, like kind of fat you know but if i eat 100 you know if i eat anything lower than 180 too many days in a row then i'll feel depleted and weak so really it's finding the sweet spot for you as an individual and then once you find that sweet spot you know finding uh finding a good way to uh get it into your body and for me personally i uh, what i feel is the easiest to start right off right start right off a uh, protein shake a protein shake in the morning now the the most economical way i have i have found for protein shakes is to get the powder yourself you know and then mix it with milk right because if you buy if you buy protein shake if you buy oh well, I'm probably yelling and I got the microphone right next to me I'm so sorry <laughs> um, if you buy protein shakes from the store then it comes out to I think like oh gosh depending depending on which protein shake you buy and where you get it from I want to say it ranges from like maybe a dollar fifty to even as high as like three dollars like three dollars is on the super high end um, uh, per per shake right as opposed to getting a uh, you know a five or the largest container of whey protein that you get and then just mix, mixing it serving by serving you know it takes it takes maybe an extra minute to prep but i feel like the amount of money that you save in the long run is definitely worth that extra minute um so right uh your your average whey protein is going to be about 24 grams of protein per serving so 24 plus 8 grams of protein uh you know if you mix it with milk if you mix it with like uh like uh like cow milk or I'm not sure how much protein goat milk has, but like if you're mixing with almond milk, unless the almond milk comes with protein, uh, oh, what am I getting at? A little bit of a ramble, but just you know, take into account the protein that comes with whatever you're mixing with. You know, you're mixing it with water and you're hard pour. I used to mix it with water, and that is the grossest thing. I need to turn the AC on. <laughs> mixing protein with water is probably one of the nastiest things, right? It would make my stomach turn. I'd mix it with like this much of water, like maybe three or four ounces of water, so I could just take it down in like two chugs. Because I didn't want to buy milk. Because I thought <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant, so I got I got to buy lactose free milk. And for a long time, money was super tight, and I couldn't. I felt like I couldn't just be buying milk like that. Water's free. 
Um, right. So also, if you're using almond milk, you know, that is not fortified with protein, then you got to account for that, right? But let's say you're using regular milk that has 8 grams with a scoop of protein that comes out of 32 grams just for the shake. And then the next thing I would suggest if you're having trouble uh, getting adequate protein is having a protein bar, right? Um, not a crazy, not a crazy protein bar that's like packed with sugar. I find that the pure protein brand is one of the most economical, um, and it tastes it tastes pretty decent for the for the price that it is. And then next up, I feel like the, one of the more nutritional bars and and the better tasting ones. When I say nutritional, I'm talking about like grams of protein. Uh, to calorie ratio, right? Like you don't want to have you don't want to have a 20 gram protein bar that's 400 calories. That's a little ridiculous. Um, you know, I think a 20 gram protein bar with 200 calories is pretty freaking good, right? I'd consider that pretty good. You know, the lower ratio you can get, the better. Um, and then it's up to you if you can sacrifice the taste for the cost and money is important to you, then do that. If you're if you're in a situation where you care more about the flavor than the cost, you know, then obviously get what you like to eat more, right? I buy my girl the protein bars that she enjoys eating, right? The ones that are most flavorful. Me, I'm not too big on flavor, so I buy myself the cheapest ones that I can still that I can still manage to eat on a daily basis, <laughs> which is the pure protein brand, which by the way, pretty much on the nutritional scale, it's pretty even with the Quest bars. Um, so with that said, a little bit of another tangent, but yo, oh, side tangent, guys, when I go off on a tangent, um, it's partly because, you know, sometimes my brain is scattered and I'm just like all over the place. But if you listen to my tangents, I have a lot of like little gems of knowledge in there. And with that said, I'm about seven minutes into this recording prior editing. So if you made it this far, drop a like down below. So I know you're listening and a comment. I think I'm going to say comment, but yeah, the point what I was getting at was that my tangents have a lot of little hidden gems in it, right? So you got your breakfast done, right? The breakfast is a protein shake and a protein bar. So the protein bar is 20, the protein shake is 32. That comes out to 52 grams of protein just for your first meal, right? And typically your first meal probably should be as soon as you wake up, honestly. As soon as you wake up, I feel like from a bodybuilding standpoint and from a hypertrophy standpoint where you're trying to build as much muscle as you can, then you need to get protein as soon as you wake up because your body has gone, you know, five to 12 hours without any type of nutrition. So get your protein, get a couple glasses of water in, and then you're good to go. Um, what I would not recommend are eggs. Now, the reason I personally don't like eggs, although they are, they eggs are very, uh, very cost, cost effective when it comes to uh, uh, protein, uh, like 20 grams protein per serving to cost ratio, like a carton of eggs is like two bucks, two to $3. And if you get the 18, I get the 18 uh, carton gallon or 18 carton of eggs, right? And so uh, three eggs is 21 grams if you get the large eggs. So there's six servings in there. And if it's $2 for six servings, that comes out to between 30 to 40 cents per 20 grams of serving of protein. And that is amazing. That is amazing. That's pretty much as cost effective as you can really get. The only thing I don't like about eggs, even though they have a lot of nutritional value, right? They got a lot of good fats and vitamins and minerals in them is for me personally, eggs fill me up really quickly. Like three eggs for me, I just had a burrito, uh, egg burrito yesterday that had three eggs in it and it pretty much filled me up and ruined my appetite for dinner, which is crazy because I never have a hard time finishing dinner. But with that said, on the other hand, you know, if you know, if you know that you know, you're know you gonna have breakfast and then you're not gonna be able to eat for a long time and you wanna you wanna control your cravings, then I would suggest throwing in eggs with your first meal of the day, right? So you have a protein shake, protein bar, and eggs. So you do that, then you're even further along, right? You're at 70, you know, between 72 to 74 grams of protein for your first meal. And then on top of that, those eggs are gonna stay in your stomach pretty heavy throughout, throughout a few hours. And that's going to control your cravings, help you on your weight loss, weight loss, fitness journey, you know. But for me personally, I just want to pack in as much protein as I possibly can, because I cannot go, <laughs> I cannot afford to go six hours without eating. If I go, if I go six hours without eating, that means my next meal I have to have, I got to like double up on the protein, and that's even more food I got to eat. Um, the next thing I suggest, I say this all the time, but <laughs> canned chicken, right? Uh, so. 
I get my canned chicken from Walmart. I get the Walmart brand. I think it is uh, la, 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 between six to eight dollars um, for a four pack. And I'll eat one can a day. One can comes out to 52 grams of protein. Now, typically, um, I'll just take that can and drain it out. You know, maybe put a little bit of condiment on it. Maybe like a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of barbecue sauce. Just enough to like flavor it so it doesn't taste completely disgusting. And then that's 52 grams right there. So if you just have your protein shake, your protein bar uh, for your first meal. And then post-workout or even pre-workout because the chicken digests really fast. Uh... You're sitting at about 100 grams of protein, right? Within the first, you know, like, the first, like, uh, you know, six to eight hours of your day, 100 grams of protein right there. The next thing I would suggest is uh, tuna, canned tuna, right? Uh, you know, the normal size can of tuna is 20 grams of protein, and there's a really small amount of tuna in that can. Now, I am definitely on the side, I'm definitely in the camp, of people that does not enjoy just canned, like drained canned tuna, I feel like it's really bland. So what I'll do is I'll sprinkle just a little bit of salt. I'll take a, uh, like a, uh, an average size spoonful of light mayonnaise, throw it in there, mix it up, and you can eat that, right? Um, I feel like one regular size can of tuna is a very tiny amount of food, but the amount of protein that you get with it is awesome, right? So I would suggest two cans of that, right? Two cans of the canned tuna would put you at 40 grams of protein. Now give this a shot, huh? If you really care, if you made it this far, if you made it this far, give this meal plan a shot, and I'll list it as I go in the editing process. I'll list out each, I'll list, I'll list out each item, right? Um, and give you pretty much a rundown of what it's gonna look like throughout your day. Um, so give this a shot, and let me know in the comments down below. Like, come back to this video and let me know how it went for you. So after the uh, after the canned chicken. You're looking at 100 grams of protein for the day. You have your two cans of tuna that you're sitting at 140 grams of protein for the day. Now, I would say for the average individual, you're pretty, you, you pretty much only need probably like one more solid meal a day and then maybe a protein snack at night. If you're a larger individual, um, then you might need two meals or one big meal and a, and a snack. Um, so then... The next meal of the day, if it's going to be your last meal, I would suggest a, a slow digesting protein. So that could be, um, you know, uh, pork, beef, or red meats. Um, you can even, uh, you can, I don't know the exact specifics, but mixing uh mixing carbs with your protein creates what's called a protein sparing effect which basically means that when your body needs energy instead of taking protein instead of taking the energy from the protein that you eat your body's going to pull from the carbohydrates that you eat first that way what's left over the protein that's left over is going to be used for your muscle building right so if, if it's going to be your last meal of the day and you're eating ground beef um the ground beef that i buy is 19 grams of protein per 112 grams of uh, of meat so I weigh it out, I weigh out two servings, that puts me at 48 grams of protein, right? And then that 48 grams of protein, protein would put me at uh, 100 and, uh, 188 grams, 188 grams of protein for the day, right? So that's gonna put me right in the sweet spot, right? Right in a good spot for what I want. And then, you know, sometimes throughout the day, especially in the evening, I have myself a pretty, <laughs> a pretty heavy alcoholic beverage or like snacks throughout the day, and that's gonna add to my to my calorie. I don't really think about my calories, but it's in the back of my head, right? It's gonna add to my calories. Um, yeah, not gonna. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if if that's all you eat during the day, and you're you're you know pretty much an average Joe, what I just went over is gonna put you at 188 grams of protein during the day. And I feel like if you stick to this meal plan, you're gonna find yourself hungry, right? I feel like you're going to find that throughout the day you could get hungry because it's not a lot of food, but I find that it is the best way to get as much protein as you possibly can on a consistent basis. So that's going to put it, put you at 188. If you're a bigger fella, if you're, if, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think a lot of my subscribers are, are going to be needing um, any more protein than that. Cause I feel like if you're watching my videos, then you're probably, I feel like if you're in the 200 pound range of lean muscle, 
then maybe, maybe I can add something. Maybe I can add something to your knowledge, but I would err on the side that you already know a lot of the stuff I'm talking about anyways. Um, but if for whatever reason, you're really trying to bulk up on lean mass, then you can throw in another protein shake at the end of the day. Or, like I was stating earlier, you can make yourself some eggs. Make yourself, you know, three eggs, about 20 grams of protein of eggs for your last uh, for your last snack of the day. And those eggs are going to sit heavy in your stomach, just like I said. And that's going to keep you full throughout the night. So, just to recap. Protein shake, protein bar in the morning. If you know you're going to go a while without eating, then throw in some eggs. Uh, the next meal I can suggest, be a can a can of uh, what pre pre prepared pre prepared chicken is that a term of pre a can of, uh, a can of chicken Jesus <laughs> um, and then after that two cans of tuna for your last meal uh, two servings uh, or at least uh, you know um, between forty to fifty grams of protein of some type of slow digesting protein source and then like I said. What is this guy doing? Like I said earlier, you know, mixing carbs with your meals allows the protein to be used a little bit longer in your body. Uh, I don't know. I can't think right now. It's raining and I'm trying to focus on driving. <laughs> uh, that's getting kind of chilly. My fucking elbow. Oh, I just zipped up my mic. Yeah, I keep forgetting I have a mic. So I've probably been yelling this whole time, but I don't need to be. I'm so sorry. Um, right on. So if you, hey, that wraps up the video. Those are my personal, that's me personally, how I find the easiest way to get in protein. Now, with that said, if you're, you've got like an on-the-go lifestyle, then I feel like what I just went over can fit with that. Because the protein shake, protein bar in the morning, it's pretty mobile, right? A can of chicken can be taken with you to work. Cans of tuna can be taken with you to work. And then your last meal of the day, can be made at home 100% uh, yo guys if you got any questions leave them in a the comment down below if you made it this far and you actually enjoyed what I had to say and you learned something leave a like if you didn't leave if, <laughs> if you did not learn anything then leave a dislike and then drop a comment down below um, on what I can do better next time I'm always looking to improve my channel um, I'm still working on the audio quality from a moto vlogging and you can click off the video now if you want to I'm done talking about the protein but, uh, so originally I was thinking my original thought about my audio issues with my microphone on the uh, motor vlogging, we got a green light. What the fuck is going on? Was, um, was that the, uh, the decibels of my motorcycle were too loud and it was, my mic was too sensitive to keep up with it. And then I watched a YouTube tutorial or a YouTube video on the GoPro issue and the guy in there was having the same issue and he, he changed some settings around and it fixed it for him. So I changed some settings around and it did not fix it for me. Um, so now I'm wondering if one, is it the quality of my mic? Cause my mic is like a $15 mic. So I have a $60 mic coming in and hopefully that one fixes the problem. And if that's not the problem, then it's gotta be some type of connectivity issue when I'm writing. Like when I'm writing, maybe this, if this is producing a crackling effect right now, then I've solved the issue, right? If this getting wiggled around is causing crackling, then I have solved the fucking issue. So I'm just going to test that real quick. I'm praying to, I'm crossing my fingers that it crackles because <laughs> if it's crackling, that means there's a not, not a good connection and that can be solved pretty easily with some like putty to, you know, keep the connection tight. Um, but yeah, so I got a microphone coming in probably today or tomorrow and I'm super excited about that because I want to get these moto vlogs like perfected for y'all but that's gonna end today's car vlog thank you so much for watching yo stay safe and i'll catch y'all in the next one